Supreme Court's recent decision on political campaign spending. Just getting underway live here on C-SPAN. Chris Van Hollen. It was touch and go whether he could be here today, depending on whether his street in Maryland was plowed, but it was. So we're here together. Uh, and I want to thank Chris for his partnership and his very hard work and invaluable contributions to this legislation. As you know, last month the Supreme Court shattered nearly a century of U.S. law designed to curb the influence of corporations in our election process. Today, we're beginning to pick up the pieces. Truth be told, Chris and I, along with many court watchers, have been bracing for an unfavorable decision ever since the court decided to rehear the Citizens United case earlier this fall. But the court's ruling surpassed our worst fears. With the stroke of the pen, the court decided to overrule a decade-old ban on corporate expenditures and override the will of millions of Americans who want their voices heard in a democracy at a time when Americans are so worried about special interests having much too much influence in Washington the court inexplicably opened up the floodgates to much greater special interest influence than we have ever seen before. The decision was corrosive to our democracy, hard to understand, and frankly, if you love the way this country has been built up as a democratic nation, it was an infuriating decision. In my view, it was one of the most wrong-headed decisions in court history and its most political decision certainly since Bush v. Gore and will go down in its annals as a decision like that. Not a proud moment for the court. The American people apparently agree. According to a bipartisan poll released this Monday, Americans oppose the Supreme Court's ruling by a better than two-to-one margin. 64% disagreed with the decision compared to 27% who did. It's rare that a court decision has so many people taking a position so soon, especially one that's somewhat complicated like this. But again, I think the American people's view that special interests should not be encouraged, as the court decision did, prevailed. By the way, in the poll, a majority of Republican voters rejected the court's ruling. 51% of them thought it was improper. And to say the least, the high court in the land is at odds with public opinion. It's also at odds with the Constitution, which labors strenuously to keep all citizens equal. Well, we are not going to let this decision go unchallenged. So today, Congressman Van Hollen and I are announcing the framework for comprehensive legislation we intend to introduce in our respective chambers the week after recess. And unlike most bills that are introduced in Congress, this one has a deadline for action. If we don't act quickly, the court's ruling will have an immediate and disastrous impact on the 2010 elections. So our goal is to advance the legislation quickly. Otherwise, the Supreme Court will have predetermined the winners of next November's election. It won't be Republicans. It won't be Democrats. It'll be corporate America. And Leader Reid and I know Speaker Pelosi have encouraged us to move this legislation, to assemble this legislation quickly. The need to act quickly is in part what motivated our decision not to go the route of a constitutional amendment. Others in the House and Senate are preparing plans to pursue that path, but we believe we have to press ahead immediately. So in the week since the 5-4 decision came down, Chris and I, together with many of our colleagues, and with the White House, have finalized a legislative approach we think represents Congress's best remedy to this act of political overreach by the court. Our bill takes five steps. We ban foreign corporations from influencing our elections. Foreign leaders like Hugo Chavez and regimes like the Chinese should have no backdoor ability to undercut our democracy. Second. We stop bailout recipients or government contractors from spending unlimited amounts because taxpayer money should not be used to promote a company's political interest. Third, we impose new disclosure requirements. And fourth, we impose new disclaimers on TV ads. And both of them, as you see, will drill down deep 
so that the real person who put forward the money is disclosed and has to disclaim. And finally, we require candidates to have reasonable access to TV airtime if corporations are going to make them the target of political expenditures. I'm going to discuss the last three. Chris will discuss the first two in some detail, and then we'll answer your questions. So let me talk about disclaimer, uh, disclosure. Our bill will follow the money. Our legislation imposes a series of new disclosure requirements that will create an unprecedented paper trail to track the activities not only of corporations, but all types of organizations that have previously operated in the shadows. Under our bill, for the first time, all corporations, all labor unions, and all 501c345 organizations, as well as 527s, would be required to register accounts designated for political broadcast advertising with the Federal Election Commission. If you're going to put these ads on TV, there's going to be a separate track for the money that you're required to disclose. Every dollar that goes into that account and the name and organization of the person who put it there must be reported. Every dollar that gets spent out of the account and the nature of the activity it's paying for must also get reported. Furthermore, this is really important, any transfer of dollars from these accounts to other accounts would also need to be documented and reported to the FEC. We will drill down so the ultimate funder of the expenditure is disclosed. We will not let corporations or anyone else hide behind dummy groups called Citizens for a Better America or whatever. And if there's a real name for that one, I didn't mean that one in particular. Uh, this way, any funneling of resources by a particular company to the Chamber of Commerce or any other professional organization cannot escape detection. These requirements won't ban political activity, but the level of transparency will at the very least make corporations realize everything they do in the nature of political advocacy will be public. That will make them think twice before spending unlimited sums to influence elections, the deterrent effect should not be underestimated. In the realm of disclosure, our bill would require corporations to disclose their expenditures on their website within 24 hours, to their shareholders on a quarterly basis, and in their filings with the SEC. Second, in addition to increased disclosure, we impose new, tough disclaimer requirements for political ads. Everyone's familiar with the rules that have politicians appear on camera at the end of their ads and declare, I'm so-and-so and I approve this message. Well, for any corporation that decides to buy airtime in an effort to influence an election, we're going to impose the same stand-by-your-ad requirement on that company's CEO. Even if the company funnels money through a shell group or pools its resources with other corporations, our bill would still require for them to be identified in any ad they put on the air. Again, we will drill down so the ultimate funder of the expenditure is disclosed. The CEO who will go on the air will be the one who has put in the most money, not some shell group. In instances where more than one company pours money into a shell group, we require the top five corporate funders to be identified by company name on the screen, and the corporation that gives the most would have its CEO appear on camera to give the standby your ad disclaimer. This is how the state of Washington handled these ads. We've had a blueprint, and it's been effective. If more than one company is given an equal amount, a coin flip determines which CEO appears on the camera. Third, our bill is going to include the lowest unit rate requirement. If a corporation buys airtime, to run ads on broadcast, cable, or satellite television that support or attack a candidate, that candidate and the political party is given a fair chance to respond by receiving the lowest ad rate for that media market. We have found this to be very, very effective in terms of the so-called Millionaires Amendment, and we're applying the same type of rules here, and that is constitutional. Overall, the Supreme Court's decision opened up a... Sorry. Overall, the Supreme Court's decision opened the floodgates to a torrent of corporate money. That's the bad news. The good news is there are solutions that can help repatch the dam, 
Congressman Van Hollen and I will be working diligently and quickly to patch those holes as quickly as possible. Chris. Well, thank you, uh, Senator Schumer, and I want to thank uh, my friend Chuck for all his leadership on this issue and for moving together so quickly uh, to respond to what was a radical uh, Supreme Court uh, decision uh, that does open the floodgates to big corporate special interest money uh, being pumped directly uh, into elections in an unrestricted uh, manner. And we do need to move very quickly to blunt the corrosive impact uh, that decision will have on our democracy. Uh, so I want to thank uh, Senator Schumer uh, for his leadership. Uh, thank the Speaker of the House, uh, Nancy Pelosi, 